I wasn't on duty. Uh, I didn't think that I needed to well, say. If you yeah. say so. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I just, just give us the benefit of your sweet. Oh, Jai. Oh, Jai. <laughs> <laughs> Jai. <laughs> Stop the propaganda, it will help you. Uh, it is sweet. <laughs> Next time the finance minister wants to apologize, just come and rent out Johnny Hughes. I'll Please. give you the price. Bye-bye. You started with a nice serenade. It will soften the hearts of Ghanaians because, <laughs> Johnny, I've opened our Facebook page mm. and when the finance minister talked about, oh, we are, we've gone up in terms of our whatever it is, the people say, you're not paying your debt. So, of course, paying. of course, so you're, you're, you're reserved. You're not paying. <laughs> of course, I, you have you money. Know, yes, you the people are not, they, they, they are going beyond the words yeah. of the minister yeah. in fact they are going beyond just the apologies and they are mm. saying well tell us why we why, how how mm. we came to be in this position mm. but anyways let's correct on the phone line with dr duan and the mg is one of the uh, senior citizens that we decided to owe disrespect the contracts that we had with them and we have put them in a certain line of fire where senior citizens now go and pick it and have and have placards after serving their nation graciously and gracefully. Well, as a leader of the pension bondholders uh, who are asking for the right things to be done. Doc, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Now, the minister has apologized. Is this the kind of apology we're looking for? Do, we, do you deserve an, uh, require an apology at all? Well, we haven't asked for an apology. We have suffered and we are, we are taking it like that. But if somebody does something or uh, you implement a policy and you see that the effect on your citizens uh, are not that uh, are too bad and you say you have apologized, that is, that is fine. But it doesn't take the, the problems that we have gone through uh, out of the way. We have already gone through that problem so. But it's, it's mm. symbolic. Right. The monies that are owed you, your own money that you decided to invest uh, and you were sure that those ones will not be touched, contrary to what the president has said, that there will be no haircuts. haircuts. You had received your own set of haircuts that you didn't ask for. But where are we now in the demand for what is due you? Well, let, let me first explain this. I've tried to explain to uh, people that we didn't get any haircuts for the domestic debt exchange. Mm-hmm. And I've explained the haircut. Haircut is when your principal that you have given to the government. The government says, I can't pay you all the money you gave me. So, for example, you bought bonds of 100000 and government says, I can pay you 80000 Then there is a haircut. So as far as Ghana, the domestic one, is concerned, there was no haircut. Even though haircut is not the only problem that people face when there is restructuring. For the external one, which is the euro bond, that is clear. There's a haircut. Government says, the euro bond, I can't pay you all the amount you have loaned me. I will only pay you part. So that is the proper haircut. But it wasn't for the domestic one. So for the domestic one, there was no haircut. Everybody's principal is intact. The only thing is that your principal, which you are supposed to get it maybe this year, government is dividing it into 12 and paying you over 12 months. You will lose value of your money. But the loss of value of your money does not represent a haircut. Haircut is technically when your amount is taken as a I owe you 100000 but I can only pay you 80000 So let, let's get that one uh, uh, clear. So aside that, the problem that we had to go through was even the waiting. The waiting period from February uh, up to when we were picketing to get the exemption. Everybody saw what we went through. Going for picketing every day to ensure that we were exempted from the the program right when we finally got the exemption uh, on 12th on 16th february when we announced the exemption in parliament we again have to go through another round of picketing to ensure that we were paid what was us after a long wait to get your money especially the pensioners who are on medication the money that you must be getting regularly for your medicine wasn't coming 
you can expect people to have experience deteriorating uh, 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 health uh, uh, condition because people were rationing their their medication. You don't know when you will get money. So when they have given you your blood pressure uh, uh, drug that take it once every day, right. you decide to take it maybe three, uh, 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 once every three days. Hmm. So all those things will compound your health. So after your health situation has been compromised, you can't go back and redeem your health situation that has been compromised. Even if you go back to your regular intake, the effect will be there. You can't ask any, any medical officer. So right. all these things people have gone through. So if an apology has come, that is fine. But is it going to resolve the problems that you have gone through with your health, the deterioration of your health, if somebody wanted his money to go and do as a, as a medical officer who was with us, needed the money to go and do surgery on the, a certain date, and the money didn't come, and therefore he couldn't do the surgery, you know the effects of his illness. By the time you get the money to go for the surgery, it has been compounded. Your situation has been compounded. So we have gone through a lot. Uh, but after... We have uh, picketed, and now we got the government to start paying us at and when these were due. We haven't seen anything, and that is from July last year mm -hmm. that the payments started coming at and when they should come. Right. Uh, we, 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 are, we have been there. We have had no challenges getting the money. But the, the earlier ones, the earlier days, is gone. The suffering has come. Some mm -hmm. of the impact will be there for some time because the effect on your health uh, is, is, is crucial. Now, Doc, you tell me, uh, you, you've uh, painted a picture of how your members and the group that you lead have gone through their own set of challenges. Now, an apology has been rendered. The question is, given the humiliation that you were put through, I mean, for a former chief justice to be out there holding a placard, for somebody of your caliber, former boss of SEC, holding a placard and consistently asking for your money. And there are many other senior citizens who have served this country in various capacities. That humiliation alone, will it ever go away? Yeah, no, it won't. It won't. I always remember, remember that. And some of us, what we went through, even uh, doing this kind of uh, activities, it, it will always be uh, at the back of our minds. We shouldn't have gone through that. So anything that you go through, it remains with you. But if somebody shows and say, I have apologized or uh, maybe letting you go through that, accept the apology that I'm saying it is not the apology which is going to erase the effect. The effect will always be there. Now, before I let you go, sir, the next generation will be thinking about whether or not to keep their monies with government in these bonds and other instruments. And they'll be looking at how you were pulled through this mud, for want of a better expression. And they'll be considering say that, well, would rather keep it at home or keep it, you know, in a susu or piggy box somewhere because we cannot trust government. How does government win back this trust that seems to have lost with the people in terms of people believing in these instruments which are supposed to be secure? Okay, this is what I have always uh, maintained. Investor or public confidence in our financial markets. And I keep on saying that that is the, the most important asset of the financial market, public confidence. These people do not have confidence in the financial market. And the confidence is the, the, what makes you leave your money with a financial institution and know or you hope, you think that the next day if you want your money, where you go, you get it. So you are happy leaving your money at the bank or at the financial institution. 
because you know any time you want it, you will get it. That is the public confidence. Once it is eroded, nobody will want to take his money to that financial institution. And that's why we have stated that, look, to bring back this public confidence, the whole financial sector cleanup that started 2017-2018 mm-hmm. and has still not been resolved. Right. We must try and complete that financial sector cleanup. People's monies are locked up. Even before the DBEP, people's money were locked up. Then the DBEP came to compound the problem. So if we don't look at the issues and resolve it fully for everyone who has placed money in the financial institution to get back his or her money, that public confidence cannot be fully restored. And people would not advise their, their, their children to put their money in the financial market. Because they will ask you, when you put yours there, what happened? And the young ones that we are counting on to, to make the investment already are not investing. I keep on saying that if you call 100 people of 45 years of age, you may not get two people who have committed to some investment. They complain the money is not enough, this, this. Um, things of this uh, world, pleasurable things that they need for their life, so expensive, they can't save to invest. So already they are not investing. And then the elderly one who started investing because at their time, I always say that at their time, we didn't have all these uh, pleasurable things in life to attract us so much. So any small money that you get, you eat small, you have some dresses, and then you try to save and invest. These days, it's not like that. So if the young ones are even not able to save and invest now, and then there are elderly ones who invested, are going through these problems, then the problem is compounded because now they will say, oh, we are not investing because when my father invested, he, he went through problems. When my mother invested, he went through problems. So they are not going to get uh, uh, a proper excuse for not investing. And that is a challenge that we should try and resolve these financial sector crises, get everybody's money paid back to that person. A lot of people have gotten their money still locked up in the financial market, including those of us who are now fighting for as lockup investment uh, holders forum. Right. You make savings and it is locked up. You make your interest, your investment and it's locked up. Why would your child also follow you and go and make the same investment and get it locked up? You know. So it is it is key that government try and resolve these issues and get everybody's back money back. And we have suggested that government should be able to talk to the World Bank, the IMF, and others who are supporting us to allow some of the financial stability funds that they are helping us to create to be used to resolve all these market issues, financial market uh, uh, local funds issues, so that we can bring back investor confidence, and then we can start building uh, our financial market uh, back to where it was before okay. this crisis started. I hear you. Doc, I thank you very much indeed for your time, and we're always grateful that you could speak with us. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Edwana Niemchi is a convener of the Pension Bond Holders Forum, and he joined us here on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. It's 26 minutes after 8. And uh, listen to the Finance Minister, Dr. Amin Adam. If you update you on the debt restructuring, which is one of the major achievements this government has made. We decided to restructure our debts because it was one of the requirements by the IMF. We started with the domestic debt exchange program. The domestic debt exchange program was a very successful program, achieving 95% participation. And on this note, I would like to appeal to the people of Ghana. 
to forgive us. To forgive us. It is never the intention of any government to impose hardships on its people. More so, the MPP government that has demonstrated that we want to reduce the burden of the Ghanaian people. And I will show why this government has, from the beginning, tried to reduce the burden of the Ghanaian people. That same government cannot impose hardship on the same people. It was a necessary, very important decision at the time that if we avoided it, our economy will not recover such as it has recovered today. The decisions we made and all the support you gave us, the people of Ghana, during the DDEP has contributed largely to the recovery our economy is seeing today. And this is why I want to appeal to you to forgive us. But also to thank you, the people of Ghana, to thank you on behalf of the president for the sacrifices, for the efforts that you all have made in participating in the domestic debt exchange program that saved our economy. And so I thank you very much for that support you gave to the government.